Digital cameras have come a really long way in their ability to track various subject types and maintain focus on those subjects so that you can, well, focus on other things like your composition and pressing the shutter button when the moment is right. And if you wanna learn how to do that in your Nikon Z5 II, that's what you're gonna learn in this video, which is a free preview from my new Nikon Z5 II tutorial course. This tutorial contains over four hours of video, corresponding text that you can read and go back to at any time, PDF downloads, a comprehension quiz, and you can watch even more free previews at photocourses.link slash Z52. If you do wanna purchase the full course, you can get 20% off using the code tube20 for our YouTube viewers. So here it is, subject tracking and focus tracking using the Z52. This camera has a lot of great subject tracking capabilities, and we're gonna look at that in this video. With that and all of the other focus tools, it can become overwhelming. So at the end of this video, we're also gonna look at a few basic configurations that you can use depending on the situation that you're in just to simplify things. Subject detection is probably going to be our main tracking mode and it works really well in this camera. In every autofocus mode, except for pinpoint, dynamic, and single point, the camera is capable of detecting and tracking various types of pre-programmed subjects if they're detected within your selected autofocus area. Subject types that the camera has been trained to recognize include people, animals, which is limited to dogs, cats, and birds, though the camera may recognize other animals, just birds, vehicles, which include cars, bikes, and airplanes, just airplanes, and then there's also an auto option where the camera is going to track the first detected type of the subjects previously listed. Or you can turn this feature entirely off. When the camera detects that subject type, you're going to see a white box around that subject and you can have different setups for both photo and video modes. And these modes are really good for rapidly getting a focus lock on a specified type of subject and then further refining that lock to an eye for people and animals, which is usually where you want to focus. And then for airplanes, it can also refine that to the cockpit. And this is going to take some of the workload away from you, helping you concentrate your efforts on, for example, your composition. However, if you do stay in these AF area modes with subject detection all the time, you do need to be careful that the camera does not detect subjects that are not there, as that can really surprise you and throw off your focus when you're not expecting it. And that can happen from time to time, so just be warned about that. For best results, ensure that your subject is lit well, it's not too small in the frame, it does have to take up a certain portion of the frame in order for the camera to detect it, and that it's not obscured by anything like for eyes, that there's no hats, hair, or glasses over those, as that can obscure eye detection. Also, be aware of which focus mode you're in. If you're in AFS, single shot autofocus, when you press the shutter halfway, that box is going to turn green to indicate a lock like it does any other time, and then the camera is not going to update the focus for changing distance until the autofocus is reactivated. So if you are tracking something that's moving, AFS is not going to update that. In AFC, however, continuous autofocus, the camera will update the focus for changing distances as long as you're holding that autofocus button down. And then just press the shutter all the way to capture the photo. And that's why I recommend going to AFC, continuous autofocus, if you're going to be using these modes with a moving subject, with static, like posing people, single shot autofocus is just fine. And then you can zoom in directly to that focus point in playback mode by pressing OK, and that's really useful for checking sharpness. But what happens if more than one of the same subject type is in your frame? 
or you want to switch the focus over to a different eye of the same person, you can use the switching option. And this is only available in the auto area, autofocus mode, taking up the entire screen. It's not available in the other AF area modes, at least not yet. When the camera detects more than one subject or eye in the frame, you're going to see an arrow next to that focus box. And that arrow is gonna tell you to use the multi-selector to switch the focus point. And you just press on the direction that that arrow is indicating. For example, you're photographing a person with their head turned slightly. The camera may first detect the further eye, but you want to focus on the closer eye. If you see an arrow next to that box, press the appropriate direction to switch to the other eye. You can also use the touch screen to change focus points, though that may not work all the time. The subject detection modes are good for detecting certain types of subjects, but what if you wanna track something else that's not in that list? Or what if you don't want to rely on the camera's detection, or it's just not working too well in your situation? You can use the 3D tracking AF area mode if you're in still photo mode, or the comparable subject tracking area mode if you're recording movies. And this feature, it's not just good for tracking something that's moving, but it's also useful for maintaining a focus lock on something static while you recompose your framing. When you enter these modes, you're going to see a small box in the center of your screen. That's your tracking box. You can move that around with the multi-selector, the sub-selector or touch, Tapping on the screen will start tracking at that spot in video mode. In still photo mode using 3D tracking, you will press and hold the shutter button halfway to track whatever is under that box. So put the box over whatever it is that you want to track, press the shutter button halfway, and that box is going to turn yellow when it's tracking. You can press the shutter button all the way at any point during that time to create the photo and then you just release the shutter button to end tracking. In video mode, to track a subject, position the box over your desired tracking point, and then press the OK button to start tracking. You'll press OK again to end tracking. Like subject detection, for the best results here, try to track something that's lit well, stands out well against the background, either in tone and or color, has a lot of contrast, and stays in the frame. The camera might struggle tracking otherwise. So with all of these options, the different focus modes, AF area modes, tracking types, what's the best to use? I just like to narrow it down to a few options. My brain likes it when things are really simple like that. If you're constantly photographing different types of subjects in different situations, you might want to go to the auto area AF mode with auto subject tracking. That's going to give you a lot of flexibility for whatever might come your way. And you can try setting the auto focus mode AFA so that the camera can switch between AFC and AFS. If you know that your subjects are always going to be static, they're not moving, then you might want to just stay in AFS. If you want a little more precise control, try AFC with 3D tracking. If you're photographing static subjects, put the box over the subject and press the shutter. It's almost like using single point that way. If that subject starts moving, the camera is gonna stay with it and update the focus continuously. Landscape or travel photographers or still life photographers who never really track anything, you're likely better off staying in AFS single shot autofocus with single point AF area mode, or go into manual focus and use all of those manual focus tools that we saw in the last lesson. With all of these different tools available for both autofocus and manual focus, there's really no excuse to ever miss focus. You just need to know when each mode is appropriate, their limitations, and how to use them and that's going to require that you practice. In the final lesson coming up next, we're going to look at some additional ways to customize our focus systems.